this guide is for everyone that wants to know how to make a solid key binding setup or wants to know more about the thinking process behind good key binding and will present you different options on how to improve your layout no matter your gaming background. But before we kick off, I want to share with you three guidelines that will be the common thread for this guide and the cornerstones of our key binding philosophy. Number one, when binding a key to a certain action, always do this from within combat point of view. The most important actions in combat need to be accessed in the most comfortable way possible and therefore bind to the easiest reachable keys. Two, movement is key during combat. Within combat, you need to avoid reducing your ability to move by binding important actions to the keys you need to access with fingers holding your movement keys, reducing even for a split second your mobility. 3. Uncompromised aim. Avoid compromising your aim mid-fight by binding important combat-related actions to your additional mouse keys. For example, Pressing one of your thumb buttons mid-fight means changing your grip on the mouse for a split second and might cause your crosshair to bounce off target. You can try this for yourself by moving your desktop cursor in a straight line while pressing the thumb key and you will notice that your crosshair bounces a bit off. Please note that these are guidelines and that the most modern shooters will force you to make certain compromises on them because of the large variety of actions you can perform these days. But having these in mind will help you to make the choices that have the least impact on your performance while in combat. But before we can configure or change any keybinds, we need to ask ourselves two questions. One, which are the most important actions I need to perform while in combat? This might sound straightforward, but that can differ depending on the shooter game you're playing. For example, Fortnite. These days, the most important aspect of combat in Fortnite is building, for protection and for getting the high ground advantage over your opponents. This implicates that your building keys need to be easily accessible without compromising too much on your mobility to move. But if we take a look at Apex Legends, it's a different story. Apex Legends is a very aim-oriented game with a more classic FPS feel to it. The most important aspect of combat in Apex Legends is aim and recoil control while at the same time throwing your opponent's aim off by moving in an unpredictable way. This implicates that your movement ability and weapon keys have top priority over other actions. So while being battle royale games, they both have another approach to it, meaning different mindsets towards keybinding. Question number two we need to ask ourselves, are all important actions I need to perform in combat bind to the keys I can access the easiest, without compromising my ability to move or aim? Before we can answer this question, you should make a list of all actions that are important in combat for that game. This probably will involve things mentioned in the list below, like movement, switching weapons, reloading, melee, interacting and stuff like that. Alright, now that we know which actions are important in combat, we we'll make a list of all keys we can reach without having to worry about pressing other keys in the process. This probably will evolve a lot of keys shown here. But if you aren't sure which keys you can easily reach without misclicks, download Virtual Hot Keyboard, a small free to try app that visualizes your keyboard input. Run some fast paced keystrokes on it so you have a better picture on which keys are suited for the most important combat actions. It's also a great tool to practice your setup or detecting any misclicks. Some software suits, like the Logic G Hub for example, are equipped with a heat map signature tool that gives you, for every game profile, a clear overview of which keys and actions you use the most. This can be a good guideline for tweaking your keybind setup. Now that we have a full picture, it's time to do some keybinding with our cornerstones in mind. Note that this guide will not cover all individual keybinds since that's a personal preference and depends on factors like experience, game, keyboard and mouse button layout. Instead, we'll highlight the mindset behind different setups. If you want to see more pro player setups, visit these websites. The first mindset example we're going to review is Ninja's Fortnite settings. Since building is the most important aspect of Fortnite combat, Ninja has chosen to prioritize these actions by binding them to the easiest accessible keys without compromising too much on his movement while performing these actions. He makes good use of both hands by binding these actions to mouse and keyboard, providing him maximum build speed 
while not having to worry about misclicks or forcing his hand into uncomfortable positions while doing so. This implicates that he has to make some compromises for weapon slots, since he needs to lift his middle finger holding his forward movement key W to access weapon slot 1 and 2. Weapon slot 4, Z and 5, X are both bound to his thumb having fast access without lifting any movement keys. Using different fingers for these two sets of weapon slots allow him to fast swap between different weapon setups. He could, for example, bind weapon slot 1 and 2 to the mouse wheel, but this would force his hand into an unnatural aiming pose for a split second, and since Fortnite has a fast weapon swap system, this could affect his aim. Also note that the mouse wheel is usually bind to the reset building edit action. The conclusion is that this key binding setup is built around the most important action in combat, which is building, without compromising his aim. The next mindset example we're going to review is my own Apex Legends keybinding setup. While this setup might look unusual at first sight, it got an in-depth reasoning behind it that integrates all three cornerstones of keybinding philosophy in a great way. Please note that I'm using the Logitech G502 Lightspeed mouse, which has a couple of extra mouse buttons I use to bind the numpad keys on. The first thing to notice is that both abilities are bound to extra mouse buttons. The tactical ability is bound right next to the left mouse button since some abilities, like Pathfinder's grapple hook, require aim. If you can bind these abilities to your mouse, especially right next to the left mouse button as you only need to move your index finger a bit, you can keep your natural grip on the mouse, but later we will talk more on that. The ultimate ability is bound to the so-called sniper button. While easily accessible, it's also misclick proof, which is a good thing for an ultimate ability. Next thing to mention is that the interact action is bound to the rear thumb button. Reasoning, besides it's one of the easiest buttons to reach, is that it gives you full control over your movement while interacting with doors or chests. Your game might become a bit more fluent when binding this to your mouse. The melee action is also bound to a thumb button, because this is an action you need to perform very quickly in the heat of battle without any misclicks. Selecting grenade is bound to the middle mouse button, again, easy to reach and something you need in combat. Reload and hold the weapon are both bound to the mouse wheel, as it are actions you need to perform often, you might not prefer lifting any of your movement fingers for accessing them. Also note that all actions bound to the mouse wheel have no negative impact on aim, as they are performed while firing is disabled. Equip weapons is only used when switching directly to the secondary weapon when holstered and bound by default. Cycle weapon on the other hand is useful in combat since you don't have to worry about reselecting the same weapon mid-fight and is bound to the left alt key which can be easily accessed with the left thumb without lifting any fingers from the movement keys. Also something to highlight is that the health selection wheel isn't used, instead all healing items are bound around the movement keys, which are easily accessed with the thumb, ring and index finger. This way you have instant access to healing items without having to call the selection wheel first. All those keys have a macro installed that switches automatically to the next item in line if the selected isn't in the inventory. That way you don't have to call the inventory to check which item you can use. Also notice is that the ping action is bound to the C key. This allows you to call out enemies mid-fight without losing mobility for a split second. The last thing to highlight is that the push to tall key is bound to the left windows key by micro representing the numpad 9 key, for the same reasons as the ping action. While this setup is highly tweaked and might go a bit far for some people, it's a great example of key binding philosophy, with full mobility a comfortable hand pose and aim control in mind, and this with a low chance on misclicks. In this last section of this guide, I want you guys to show you some additional tips and thoughts to keep in mind while configuring your keybind setup. First off, utilize the full potential of your gaming gear. This might sound strange, but a lot of people aren't utilizing the full potential of their expensive gaming gear. All gaming brands have powerful software built around their gaming gear which allows you to make numerous tweaks for your setup. Going from making a simple key remap to building sophisticated macros that perform advanced tasks for you in-game. 
Here is an example of a double macro working together allowing you to flawless bunny hop in Apex Legends with just holding down the jump and crouch key. It takes some time to create and test, but once you nailed it you can benefit greatly from it. So take your time to learn working with it and actively think about how some features might help you optimizing your keybinding configuration. This isn't only useful for games, it can also help you in your daily workflow. The next thing I want to mention is that if you are having problems with reaching all of your keys or play games that require a lot of input, you might consider using a gamepad. And while some see it as a contemptuous way of playing PC games, gamepads can come in handy for games that require a lot of input while staying mobile at the same time, like Star Citizen for example. Gamepads like the Logitech G13 are very ergonomic and have a well thought out key layout, allowing you to access a lot more keys than a regular keyboard without forcing your fingers in uncomfortable positions. Another benefit is that it is also a lot smaller than a regular keyboard, creating more space on your desk for mouse movement. Next up is consider binding aim dependent actions to your mouse as seen in the Apex Legends configuration where the tactical ability was bound right next to the left mouse button. It can be a good idea to bound aim dependent actions like for example in Overwatch, Anna's sleep dart or Roadhog's hook to your mouse. The main reason for this is that the muscle memory and eye-hand coordination for the hand controlling the mouse is better developed than the one handling the keyboard since it's used to aim. This means that the click timing which is the moment you press while your crosshair passes the target, is more on point, having a higher accuracy as a result. So guys, this was it. I hope you learned something from it and I'll see you in the next one.